So yeah, afternoon, afternoon, afternoon. How are you guys doing? It's Friday, the weekend is looming. What are you guys going to be up to this weekend? Hope that you guys going to get naughty and enjoy life. Life is short, people. Life is short. So yeah, <clears throat> as you all know, I'm enjoying the swingers life, organizing my swingers party. And uh, yeah, I got a lot of sticks sometimes and all oh, people are talking about it being nasty and seedy. But the point is, how many of you are watching Love Island? Let me tell you, Love Island is one big swingers party. Um, they, they give it the nice, nice name, love. Nothing love about Love Island. It's all so, it's all geared towards people getting it on and look at the hideaway. And um, everybody wants to get a chance to be in the hideaway <clears throat> to get it on. And uh, even at night time, you can see the cameras and people getting it on. Voyeurism at its finest. But now we don't see it that they're in one big swingers party. No, no. That's Love Island. They're looking for love. Oh, give me a freaking break. Look at who is the most, most favorite woman on the island. Megan. Megan. And why? Number one, she used to be a stripper, not holding it against her. Good for her. You go, girl. Get that money. Doesn't matter. You know, stand behind what you say. But look, Megan is the favorite. She used to be a stripper and she loves sex. She's openly said she enjoys sex. That's why she's the favorite. Yeah, she looks good. Okay. Yeah, she's pretty, pretty blonde, nice mouth, beautiful eyes. But that's not it, people. The boys know you get with Megan, you're going to get it on. And that's plain and simple how it is. That's why they're all going for Megan. The, the boys love Megan and the women hate Megan. Sounds familiar? Sounds familiar to me. Reminds me of when I was young and, you know, had it going on. All the guys like me and all the women load me. So, yeah, that's, that's what's happening. And poor, poor Laura. Huh? Laura, we all, Laura, who's really, really um, looking for love. She ain't going to find it. She ain't going to find it. They're all in there to play the game. They're all in there to play the game. Some of them know how to play it well and getting it on. And some of them like Laura, really don't know how to do, play the game. And poor Alex, who's rooting for Alex? Why do you think it's not working with Alex? This is what I was talking about or thinking about last night. All the girls know that Alex is a sure deal. He is a doctor, he's kind, he's, he's reasonable, you can communicate with him. He is caring, he is loving. Yet none of the girls want him. They try, they try, but now it doesn't work out. Why doesn't it work out? Because Alex doesn't have sex appeal. That's plain and simple how it is. Alex does not have sex appeal. He is Mr. Good Guy. The one that when you hit 40, 50, that's the one you want because you want to sit down in front of the TV, watch Love Island, Talk about Love Island, say how silly the people on Love Island are and have a laugh and then just go to bed, have some cuddles. Alex doesn't have sex appeal. That's why he's having an issue retaining or staying in a couple. And some of the girls, they're, a bit, they're smart. They want to give it a try because they recognize that he's the good guy and that the other guys in there are players. Yeah, that's just plain and simple. Except for Danny's partner. I think he is real. Yeah, I think Danny and her partner, they're real. So let me not generalize completely. But poor Laura, yeah, she's jumping from man to man. She's looking for love. I think because if you look at it, I think she's one of the oldest in the villa. She knows time is ticking away. She needs to find that man where the others, 
they can just play the game because they're still looking good. They're in the prime of their life. Don't find anybody in the villa. That's all right. Um, had a nice two months on a lovely island in the sun, getting it on, the perfect holiday, everything paid for. Why should you worry? Why should you worry? And what do we think about Samira then? Samira has left the island. Do we think that's a smart move? I personally think she should, she should have ride it out because um, only two and a half weeks left. Okay, so she wouldn't find anybody to get it on with because that's really what's happening. And <clears throat> lots of time when I'm watching program like Love Island and Take Me Out and all that kind of stuff where you have black girls, um, you know, um, joining, um, where you have black girls joining these, these programs, I always shake my head because I know that they're not going to be picked. They're, I know they're not going to be picked because the black, girl, black guys that come into those villas and take me out, they're not looking for a black girl because if they were, they would have found them in their own circle of association. They're not looking for a black girl. So the black guys are not going to choose the black girls. So that's one already. And the problem is, the white guys who might choose the black girls, the black girls are not interested in them. So there's no chemistry. And that's how it is. It's not about racism or sexism or whatever ism. It's just the reality. The white guys are not attracted to us black girls. I mean, as you know, I have wet silk. I organize adult fun parties. And all the white women that I connect with who are in the lifestyle, what are they looking for? They're looking for the black man. They're looking for my brothers. They're looking. And the black girls that I connect with in the lifestyle, they ain't looking for the white ones. They are not looking for the white ones. They're looking for those handsome, black, dark, chocolate brothers. And that's why lots of black women get pissed off when they see their brothers with white women. It's not because they're racist. It's not because, you know, they're, they're against interracial um, relationships as such. It's because they know that they are not, that the, they themselves being black, they're not interested in the white guy. They want the black guy and the black guys and, you know, black guys are getting less and less already because okay so we now have to contend with the black guys wanting the white women we have to contend with the fact that maybe they're gay it's not gonna be much left over for us to enjoy is it and that's why you find women you know you find people having affairs and i've i i um it's 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 not logical to do the one-to-one -one because, I mean, there's seven billion people, yes, on the, on the planet. But if you look at the statistics, how many men are in this world? How many women? It's not, it's not logical. But anyway, that's a conversation for a later day when I will talk about polyamorous and polygamous relationship. Um, I'll talk more about that. So back to Love Island. So yeah, I feel for Samira. I feel for Samira because she was doomed to fail right from the start. Um, yeah, she was doomed to fail right from the start. And, um, and that, that's, just, that's just sad. And let's not, you know, kid ourselves. And Megan, I love to hate Megan, really. I have a love-hate relationship. I like her, I love her because she's just being herself and she's having that sex and she's enjoying it and she's going after um, what she likes. And yeah, some people saying she's a slack, jumping from man to man. No, she's playing the game. Life is one big game and Love Island is just like a mirror of life. All is fair in love and war. As far as I'm concerned, all is fair in love and war. Uh, if I want you, I want you. I don't care. I don't care. I really don't care. Um, and I'll be honest. 
and I am ready for if somebody comes after my men because <laughs> I'm ready for war. Yeah, because I consider all is fair in love and war in Love Island. It's, it's, you know, you see that, you see, see what's happening and it's very, and obviously everything is intensified because there's money to be won, big money to be won if you are the last woman and man standing, especially as a woman, because I think at the end, um, yeah, the couple that wins and then the girl can decide whether she's going to keep the money for, all for herself or she's going to share with her couple. One thing I'll know, I wouldn't be surprised if Megan wins in whatever couple she is and tells the guy, see you later, I'm taking the 50,000 quid, see you. She knows how to play the game. Laura, she doesn't know how to play the game. She's looking for the wrong thing on the island. Um, um, that, look at Adam. Adam knows how to play the game. Adam, we all want to hate Adam. Telling that he, you know, he's a man whore. Adam knows how to play the game. Now you might might argue that oh, he's left the villa. He's been voted out. Did you know that he got a three hundred thousand um, k contract to just do a tour as Adam? Some people on Twitter are saying, okay, but what is he going to be doing on, on tour? What, what is his, he's going to be doing Adam. <laughs> Adam, he knows he, he's easy on the eyes. He is smart. He is smiley. He knows women and whoever signed the contract with him, they know Adam just being Adam is going to attract the women and they're going to pay money to see Adam, to see Adam doing what, what? Not, nothing to just meet Adam, maybe have a kiss with Adam, whatever. They, they, these are people who understand the game. Understand the game. It's not about love, people. Love or not love as we've been raised. Um, black women, <clears throat> not the way we've been raised. It's not, it's, you know, go after what you want. Um, go after what you want. Let me re read a comment. Let me see a comment. Oh dear, oh dear, 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 dear. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. So somebody is saying, <laughs> and I'm not gonna, I'm not going to have the debate with him because that's an old, old debate, and that's not what this um, live video is about. But. I will read the comment just for this for your people's sake, because this video is not about black and white anyway. It's not about black and white relationship. It's about the fact that Love Island is one big swingers party, and we all approve sit, sitting and watching Love Island. Whereas in norm in our day to day life, we will be um, saying that. Oh, those that are in the lifestyle, they're nasty, they're seedy. But yet we are all watching Love Island where they're all getting it on. They're all getting it on. Um, they're going to be watched. There's cameras 24-7. At least my swingers party, there's no cameras. It's all very discreet. And if only if you're into the voyeurism, you can find a place where, there's where you can do, you know, where you can watch, etc. But um, yeah, for the sake of um, transparency, I'm going to read something one of my viewers have said. And he says, it's simple really, black guys run to white women for several reasons. Black women tend to be very overwhelming, too much makeup, too loud, too bossy and controlling, fake nails, fake hair, tend to embarrass their, their partner instead of representing him belittling instead of encouraging and supporting. I say nothing. Yes, got my fake hair. Definitely. Do I have to match makeup? Just a bit of lipstick. Um, am I loud? Definitely loud. Yeah, I am loud. Um, black women tend to be overwhelming. Okay, not quite sure um, what he means with that. Um, embarrass their partner. Well, I think 
I have shown you that I definitely don't embarrass my partner, that I definitely respect him and I expect everybody around me to respect him as well. Um, he knows that. Um, what else? Belittling instead of encouraging and supporting. Well, I do my best to support my black brother, my black partner, and my black brothers in general. But as I said, this is not a debate about black or white. And um, yeah, I have opinions about the things that you've written being a black woman and you being a black guy, you've come from, you know, um, properly um, black parents. So, but anyway, that's a discussion for a later day. I'm not gonna go get into, into that. Um, as I said, that's not the focus of this um, um, video, but we'll, we'll definitely get into that another time. The focus of the video is that we should stop being hypocritical. People should stop being hypocritical about people that, um, and judging people who are in the swingers lifestyle. Oops. People who are in the swingers lifestyle because, um, yeah, we're all, we all have a bit of swingers within us and, you know, not because you are in, I think we not need to be honest with, with ourselves. We all would like it to be able to just say, ah, oh, okay, I fancy a bit of sex. Let me just go to the club and, and where it's safe, it's safer than, you know, going to a normal club and then hook up for one night stand. Swingers club is our, and swingers parties are so much safer um, because all the rules are put in place for everybody to be playing safe. But anyway, not going to drag the video. Clarence, we're going to have this conversation because um, it, uh, it's an ongoing conversation in our community about the black and white. Um, and I've heard it, oh, and your points, I've heard them over and over again. And uh, yeah, it's, it, it's kind of grinds on me, really. Um, but as I said, we're going to have that conversation maybe on Monday um, when you tune in. That's going to be the topic. We we'll shall see. Any guy, guys, enjoy the rest of your weekend. It's very, very nice weather. It's sunny. Maybe you want to go to one of the nature spa, go to Eureka. I don't know. Um, Tonight, uh, Black Man Fan Club is on in Ecstasia, and it's the super villain and superhero team. Go and check it out. You will like it. You will love it. Go and have some fun. Leave all the stress of work and stress of whatever behind and just go enjoy yourself. Or just go and uh, do whatever you like. All right? And, um, yeah. Um, what does Clarence say? The swingers lifestyle is a good alternative to avoid the stress and the drama of pointless relationships. Yeah, um, lots of people get into the swingers lifestyle because, um, yeah, they're tired of um, all the drama. But as I said, that's not really, um, so that's a good point. Um, I'm not going to get into it further because the video, I don't want the video to be too long. Um, but yeah, lots of people, I've realized that people that who are in the lifestyle, in the swingers lifestyle, they tend to be much happier. I'm not saying that being, as I said previous in the previous, being in the lifestyle is not easy, it's not always easy because you have to deal with other type of um, issues. And uh, you need to really know yourself. You really need to know yourself um, to be able to be in the swingers lifestyle. You really need to know your own limits, your own boundaries. Um, you have to look at love and relationship in a very, very different way. Um, changing your thinking, changing your thinking, and that's not easy. That's a process, well, for me. I'm still in the process and, um, you know, having to look at life differently. Um, so yeah, um, as I said, Life, being in the lifestyle, it has its perks, it definitely has its perks, um, it has its pros. But as with everything, everything has its pros and cons. But um, yeah, we'll have a conversation about that another time. Um, 
So once again, driving the point home, Love Island is one big swingers fest, whether we like it or not. And we should stop being hypocritical. And I said it before, how many of us have indulged in the book 50 Shades of Grey, we have, we've read it, we've read the book, then we've, then Christian version, you know, Christian point of view came out and we've gone and read it again. And we're all waiting for the next movie to come out. And, and so, you know, if you're talking about the swingers lifestyle or the swingers clubs are seedy, you're full of shit, basically. Because especially if you love Love Island, you are for your reason, supreme you for your supreme because that's just what's going what goes on on the island all right then guys time to go and enjoy the sun for me um wherever you are enjoy your life that's the bottom line do what you like without harming others but do what you like enjoy life life is short people tomorrow you know you might be gone you might step out of the house and something happens and it's all over and done with and nobody cares when when you when they're doing your eulogy nobody cares whether you were in the lifestyle nobody cares whether you had an affair nobody cares if you had loads of money if you were trying the driving the most nobody cares really nobody cares just enjoy your life all right then see you guys later bye